Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Inside Winston Cup Racing. I'm in the garage area at the Charlotte Motor Speedway where preparations are underway for the UAW GM Quality 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race, which is scheduled to run off this afternoon. Ricky Rudd will start from the pole. Yesterday in the Bush race here, Mark Martin dominated, Dale Jarrett came home a close second, and Johnny Benson took another step towards winning his first ever NASCAR Bush Grand National Championship. Bill Weber is just down the road in our studios, and he has all the stories. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Ned. And hello again, everybody. A week where we get to eat at the best place in town, home. Charlotte is ready to roar to life this afternoon, and just ahead, we'll have the warm-up from the Speedway where Ricky Rudd has the pole. We'll also examine Sabco Racing, where a summer of struggle has resulted in a season of reflection. Then a look at how Jeff Gordon spends his day off, showcasing the sport, and bringing a big smile to some less fortunate kids. If you think the race is going to be good, where do you see this show? The morning edition of Inside Winston Cup Racing for Sunday, October 8th. Today's show is brought to you by Texaco Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft, making the world a very cool place. And by Goodyear, number one in racing, number one in tires. This segment of IWCR is brought to you by Texaco Haviland Formula 3. Add more life to your car. Charlotte marks the beginning of the end of the racing season. The championship battle is in clear focus. The media center is a blur of new colors and cars as sponsors unveil plans for next season. But with four to go, some teams are desperate while others are determined. 500 miles here can be a pleasant Sunday drive or a frustrating journey with poor directions and no map. One year ago, Ricky Rudd and Jeff Gordon tangled on the track, resulting in finger pointing and fines. Today, Rudd goes from the pole. Gordon is going for the championship. Randy has the pre-race report. Well, Bill, the festivities surrounding the All-Pro Bumper to Bumper 300 and the UAW GM Teamwork 500 were supposed to get underway here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway on Wednesday. But unfortunately, Mother Nature didn't cooperate as Hurricane Opal blew through the East Coast and canceled just about all activities at the track on Wednesday and Thursday. The weather finally cleared out of Charlotte, allowing first round of Winston Cup qualifying to get underway under sunny skies Friday afternoon. Kodiak Monte Carlo driver Ricky Craven was one of the early time takers. Ricky rolled around the 1.5 mile Charlotte Motor Speedway for a speed of 179.850 to set the early mark. Ricky was able to claim the top spot until the tide ride of Ricky Rudd rolled to a lap of 180.578 miles per hour. Rudd's only real threat came when the 45th car took to the track, the DuPont Chevy of driver Jeff Gordon. Gordon gobbled up the Charlotte asphalt at 179.635 miles per hour, coming up just short of another front row start. Sort of welcomely surprised about the pole. We didn't expect and we didn't work towards a, uh, setting the car up just for the pole, but we unloaded a car over here the other day and Thursday's practice, we were like one of the quicker cars, so uh, we're very happy about that. But race setup, I'm even more optimistic. Ricky Rudd's current crew chief, Billy Engel, announced on Friday that he will take over as general manager and crew chief for Steve Grissom and the Diamond Ridge Racing Team at the beginning of 1996. As part of his package, Engel will compete as a driver in selected NASCAR super truck races, as well as several Bush Series events next year. In other news, a big shakeup at Penske South Racing. Three crew members, engine builder David Evans, cylinder head specialist Ronnie Phillips, and fabricator Billy Woodruff have been asked to leave after accepting employment from Sabco Racing in 1996. No news as to their replacements. Also, crew chief Jeff Hammond has left the Kendall Pontiac team of Dick Brooks. Early speculation is that he is the top contender for crew chief position at Rudd Performance Motorsports. Well, the weather should be great for this 500-mile fall classic here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. A couple things to look for. Ricky Rudd trying to keep his streak alive of winning at least one race for 12 straight seasons. Jeff Gordon appears the man to beat, and we'll have to watch Dale Earnhardt try to win this race from his 43rd starting position. That'll be a blast. Bill, back to you. Thanks, Randy. It's an all-Ricky front row. The Unical Challenge is worth more than $53,000. Craven finished 10th here in the spring. Jeff Gordon leads Earnhardt by 302 points. Michael Waltrip goes fourth. Mark Martin and Morgan Shepard share row three. Great qualifying run for Todd Bodine. Unofficially, Terry Labonte the fastest in final practice. Bobby Hamilton and Ward Burton round out the top ten. 
On Tuesday, it was confirmed Johnny Benson will make the move to Winston Cup in 1996 and replace Michael Waltrip in the Pennzoil Pontiac. Saturday, Benson took another step toward locking up the Bush Series title, but it wasn't pretty. Chad Little was chasing Benson in the points, but in yesterday's All-Pro 300, Greg Sachs bounced off the wall on lap 20, tagged Little's Ford, and sent Chad scraping down the front stretch. Benson benefited from a well-timed caution to catch the leaders, but on lap 117, he was racing with Jimmy Spencer when Benson's Chevy bobbled and sent both cars sailing. Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett dominated the race. Martin beat Jarrett by just over a second for the victory. Little limped home 34th. Benson finished 26th. Now Johnny leads the chase by 244 points with two races remaining. Two to go, you're closing in on that championship. Yeah, we're looking pretty forward to that. It's uh, definitely the big picture, but you know, we got Rockingham. We're gonna take Rockingham how Rockingham goes. We're not gonna do anything different there than we tried to do here today. And you know, we just had misfortune. I know Chad had misfortune and and I don't know, points are gonna fall where they're gonna fall. Hopefully that we're still on top at the end. By the way, Benson's Lipton T sponsorship will move to the Brad Aiken, Bob Sutton Bush team in 1996. Dennis Setzer is already signed to drive the number 38 Ford next year. Friday afternoon, sportsman division driver Russell Phillips lost his life in a wicked crash during a 67-lap event at Charlotte. NASCAR is continuing its investigation of that accident. Russell Phillips was 26. We, along with race fans everywhere, share the grief with his family and friends. Race day will have more from Charlotte coming up at the bottom of the hour. We'll join Ned at the new home and new look of DAJ Racing in a moment. Still ahead, a profile of Sabco Racing and a day with Jeff Gordon. Right now, you're looking at the rest of the starting grid for the UAW GM 500. Yesterday, an announcement was made at the Charlotte Motor Speedway that Band-Aid will become the primary sponsor of Dale Jarrett's Bush cars to run in 18 events in 1996, just one of many sponsorship plans that were announced at Charlotte this week. One NASCAR Winston Cup team that has really been on a roller coaster really for the last several years is the Sabco Racing Team, the Coors Light Pontiac that Kyle Petty drives. Randy Pemberton went to talk to Kyle and his car owner Felix Sabatis to find out what's been going on. Over the past year and a half, Kyle Petty and car owner Felix Sabatis have had little to celebrate in Stock Car Racing's elite Winston Cup Series. Even a win at the Monster Mile in Dover, June 6th of this year, has hardly been able to overshadow the unfortunate slide at Sabco Racing. A look back at 1992 and 93 shows Petty at his most productive point in a career that has spanned some 16 seasons. In these two years, Kyle collected three wins, and more impressively, had a stellar 18 top fives and 32 top tens in 59 starts. He also finished fifth in both those title chases. But 1994 was not kind to Kyle. After a slow start, crew chief Robin Pemberton was released after the Coca-Cola 600, and things didn't get any better from there. I really don't know what happened. It's, it's, I think it's hard to put your finger on one thing. Um, I think that we came out of 92 with a really good second half of 92, an ungodly second half of 92. And we came out looking really good and, and we're going to 93 and we started 93 pretty good. And, and even though we had some bad luck in 93, we still maintained pretty good. In 94, we started off okay and, and things just began to fall apart internally. Uh, I think with people working on the team and the way things went, Robin decided, you know, we decided Robin was going here and we were going to stay here and the way things worked out, it just, we never got organized after that. We went through a period, uh, through the middle of 94, Barry came on board and tried to get us back organized, and, and he did all he could through, through last year and this year. But it was obvious that something was missing between Barry and Kyle. Things just didn't click, and after Dover two weeks ago, Barry left to pursue other interests, leaving Kyle and Felix to contemplate his replacement and regroup for the future. I can't put a, my finger on just one thing. I take the blame for 99% for of it because I should have been paying closer attention to it, and I didn't. But I've always, I've always had the belief in that if you have somebody that works for you and you entrust them with a the job to do, you leave them alone. And unfortunately, I did that, and I shouldn't have. And I learned a very, you know, very expensive lesson because from now on, it is my race team. I pay for the bills, and I'm going to get involved with it. I want to know what's going on. And before I would show up at the racetrack and you know, I'd try to be the cheerleader, well, I realize one thing now: you can't have a cheerleader. 
Not on racing, you can't. If you think for one minute that Felix and Kyle aren't committed to turning the Coors Light team around, think again. Felix Sabatis, for one, hasn't built the most beautiful facility in Winston Cup racing just to say he did it. He's been a winner in everything he's ever done, and he vows to be victorious in this venture as well. As for Kyle Petty, he remains confident in his abilities as a driver, despite the lack of recent success. I tell you why I don't lose confidence in myself, and as, as much as any other reason. Uh, I think just growing up with Richard Petty, and growing up at Petty Enterprise, and knowing that you can go the race one week, and not make a race, and that you can come back the next week and win a race, and that you can have bad weeks, and you can have bad years, and that you survive, uh, you know, I think you have to look at the big picture, and you have to look at the total haul of what racing is. I think a lot of people get in, and they say, okay, we're having a bad year, let's get down and start pointing fingers at everybody, and I think that's what's happened to us the last year to 18 months, is a lot of people have started to point fingers, and, you know, that's just not the way it should be, so you, you can't have a team that way, so if you're, if you're going to be that kind of team player, then you need to go play on somebody else's team. He got to get mentally tough. You know, I don't think Kyle has been as mentally tough the last year and a half as, he's, as he was in the past. I don't think that he was as, as focused because he had no confidence in the people that he was working with. And I think he was going along with the program because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. You know, and he's that kind of guy. You know, Kyle, we've had one argument in eight years, and it was a, over a race in Richmond that Kenny Wallace was his teammate, and he was blocking him so Rusty could catch Kyle. That's the only argument we ever had. So we've, we've never had any words. We, had, we don't have a contract. You know, Kyle could leave tomorrow morning, or I could fire him tomorrow morning, but no one has ever been able to put a wedge between us. And as long as him and I are side by side, we get this thing turned around. We're going to get turned around. With this beautiful new shop now in place, a new crew chief on the way, and a new car coming in 1996, it will be interesting to see just how high this team can ride. They have a long way to go, but they know the 1996 Winston Cup title will be out there, and it will be waiting. Well, let's hope all those new things will help them to get back on track in 1996. We'll be back on track on this program when we come back to talk with Jeff Gordon and also the mailbox. Don't go away. The IWCR Voice Mailbox is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. Our question is from Robin Rundy from Dubuque, Iowa. Do Winston Cup teams use regular street thermostats in their cars? Hi, I'm Claude Queen, Chief Engine Builder for Darrell Walters Western Auto Chevrolet. And no, Winston Cup engines do not use street thermostats in their engines. Except for reason, we just uh, cool our engines by tape, less tape or more tape on the grill. And if it runs too hot, if the water circulates too much, we just put restrictors in the water lines. And that's how we control the speed of the water through the engine, which controls the temperature. Questions for the voicemail box are recorded on the finishing positions hotline at 1-900-73-RACES. You can also get up to the minute qualifying results, race results, and point standings. 89 cents a minute in the U.S., 99 cents in Canada. Average call two minutes for mailbox or three minutes for results. Call 1-900-73-RACES. If we use your question, you'll receive a Miller Genuine Draft race team jacket. Meet John Boy and Billy, NASCAR's resident wise guys. These radio personalities have kept race teams and race fans laughing for years. Now you can order their entertaining box set by calling 1-800-471-STOP. Call now, 1-800-471-STOP, and hear for yourself. John Boy and Billy are great entertainers, and I promise you, you will enjoy those CDs. And something else you'll enjoy is a day with Jeff Gordon, and that's coming up. As we leave you for this break, here's a look at what's coming up next week right here on IWCR. Next week, the Winston Cup Series takes the week off, but we don't. We'll set the stage for Rockingham and the final stage of the charge to the championship. Behind every well-known driver is his relatively unknown crew. We'll meet the warriors that work hard in the shadows of the garage so they can celebrate in the bright lights of Victory Lane. Hi, I'm Derek Cope. This is my fiance, Renee White. And we'd like to wish Inside Winston Cup a happy 10th anniversary. You've heard of the Winter Circle program in NASCAR Winston Cup racing, and part of the duties of a driver who is on the Winter Circle program is to help a track promote 
for one day an event that's coming up. For example, this week, Dale Jarrett was the winner circle driver that was assigned to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, a couple of weeks ago, it was Jeff Gordon at the Martinsville Speedway promoting the Goodies 500. And he spent his day in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and we were able to go along. Superstar Jeff Gordon is here with a whole entourage. We got cameras everywhere. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, how are you? How are you, sir? I'm doing good. 65, 77, yeah, that's real good. Much better. And we hate to say, um, you know, that you've got a lock on this thing because we know strange. Because we don't. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said it. Had a great year, Jeff Gordon. And how old are you? Uh, 24. 24. It's disgusting. You know, at 24 <laughs> years old, you've only been in this, what, three years? Yeah, but, you know, you, I, I, I really feel like I'm getting old now because <laughs> now I can actually go in and buy an oldies, you know, album, and I actually know, you know the, the song. <laughs> song so, uh... <laughs> right, right. Six, uh, card this guy before he takes a goodie. <laughs> we had a little bit of trouble up in Watkins Glen. We went to a movie, and uh, Joe Nemechek was signing autographs uh, in the mall. There was a radio station there live with Joe Nemchik, and they said, Hey, folks, if you're oh, listening, oh, no. Jeff Gordon and his wife just uh, came in here oh, to go nice. to the movie theater. So as we're on our way out, all the security at the at the mall said, uh, Jeff, you need to come with us because there's about 200 people out there waiting for you uh, <laughs> after you get out of the movie. So uh, we so had you to, do get like to watch the movie. What was the movie? It was an awful movie. <laughs> it, it, uh, <laughs> before I leave, now, y'all know that... Uh, uh, Brooke, my, my wife's parents, you know, they're they're right. from Winston-Salem, and I got to put in a little plug for them. Go right ahead, Parks Jeff. Insurance. I told him that. <laughs> he, said, he said, mention Parks Insurance. Do you? <laughs> he didn't think I'd do it, so he, if you're listening, Free buddy, plug! Parks Please. Insurance here in Winston-Salem, if you guys need any insurance. Do you realize? Yeah. You're a tour guide? Yeah, All right. <laughs> Well, don't let all these people scare you, huh? I'm not <laughs> running for president or anything. <laughs> Hope that we can brighten your day, all right? Maybe put you on TV. How's that sound? That sounds great? All right, we'll get you on TV. How about an autograph? Would you like me to sign that for you? All right. There you go. You want a picture? How long you plan on being in here? For the weekend, then you get to go home. I bet you look forward to that, huh? Uh, good deal. Hi, Amanda. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Oh, look at that pretty smile. Lord, we hope you don't mind us interrupting you today. Good. We got some things from Goodies. So. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Don't worry. All right. Uh, they smile very pretty, yes, absolutely. They, they've been treating us real good. All right, man, you want, you need to talk to her again? Okay. You, you're off the hook now. So. Anybody got any questions? Now, they told me you guys were all ready for questions. See, I, I knew this would happen. We'll get one, and we'll start it up. Yes, sir. Where's Brooke? <laughs> That's a technical question. Is that what you guys are studying this, this week? Uh, that's probably the most common question. You got your camera, you want to take a picture of Brooke. You don't care about me, huh? Nah. Without any further ado, I'd like to bring Jeff Gordon up and he can answer any questions you have here and then we'll break down and do some one-on-ones uh, outside. So Jeff Gordon. Got to be real careful on your brakes, boy. You know, that, that's the key at Martinsville is uh, being able to use your brakes but not use too much. My attitude is that there's a lot of races left to go, and, uh, you know, we've just got to try to do the best job that we can and, and, and hope that the consistency continues. The guys have made me look like a hero. It may it look easy, but uh, it's not. You know, it takes a total team effort. There's a lot of hard work behind the scenes and testing, uh, you know, and everything that the last two years that we've built up to get to this level, uh, I don't think, you know, I would have gotten this far, you know, if I worried about everything that was that I read in the paper and everything that everybody else has ever said. And, uh, you know, I, I think that it's all based on, comp you know, how, how well you compete on the racetrack. Okay, so is there anything 
that anybody hasn't asked you today? I mean, what's the one question that you that I can ask you that nobody else has asked? <laughs> I, I can't think of any question that was not asked today. Um, Would you rather do this or 500 more miles at Dover? Well, I, if my car's driving as good as it was last <laughs> week, I'll do another 500 miles. But, uh, you know, this was fun, too. It's a toss-up. One thing that is not a toss-up, Jeff Gordon is the odds-on favorite to win the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship this year, and he'll have to get used to some of those media days. Well, our time's up for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. I got to go in here and help these guys hang a sign so we can identify this place. Next week, the Winston Cup drivers are off, but we won't be, so you join us here on PNN for more on Inside Winston Cup Racing. Today's show has been brought to you by Texaco Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Red Dog Beer, bold yet smooth, unusually easy to drink. You are your own dog. And by Goodyear, number one in racing, number one in tires. Team Simpson is your ticket to be a part of all the exciting racing action. Call 1-800-71-RACING to order the 1995 catalog and join Team Simpson today. The official conversion van of IWCR is Gladiator by Glovell, America's number one luxury van. Lavelle, the way we put it together, sets us apart.